Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Adobe Live to this official second annual Adobe Live holiday week with a week of giveaways. I am Isabelle Poirier, but everyone calls me Izzy, and today we will be working on a dual action postcard. And right there, you might be like, uh, what? <laughs> Don't worry, it may seem a little abstract at the beginning, but we will like get to it and it's gonna be so much fun. I wanna start by saying hello to some people in the chat. I see Robert, I see Kristen, I see Caroline, I see Jan, I see Lila. Hi everyone, and thank you so much for designing alongside me today. And if I am, if it's okay <laughs> for me to be so bold, this is my first solo Adobe Live. So I am a little bit nervous. So if you want to show some love in the chat, I would absolutely love that because I needed a little bit for the first five minutes. All right. So if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe to the Adobe Live channel to stay up to date with the uh, community and the previous streams. And this week, like I mentioned earlier, there's a full week of giveaways, some awesome design by the awesome <laughs> other Adobe uh, host. <laughs> so make sure to check that link and download all the assets. And today I'm also giving you some gifts. So let's get into it so I can show you what we will be working on and what you're getting too. All right. So as mentioned previously, we will be working on a dual action postcard. And we will be designing not one, but two cards. So the first one will be the gift with the front and the back, as you can see. And the second one will be an insert with a CTA. So if CTA is new to you, it is an acronym for call to action and the back as well. I was inspired for this concept by a font that I recently designed with a few of my friends, which two of them was featured on Adobe Live. So I have to give them a shout out. So Adam Grizzly, Ariane Bedard, please make sure to check their lives. It is amazing, full of little hidden secrets to design better. Also Chelsea Nelson and Todd Beebe and myself. So the concept with this font was that we just created random letters, random numbers that does not necessarily go together, but by putting all of them together, it kind of worked. And that inspired me for the concept that we will be working on today. As you can see, this is some the letters of the font. And uh, if you go to the link with the downloadables, you can actually download that font and have some fun with it. And if you do, please use the hashtag Adobe Live Holiday Week uh, 2022 so we can see your designs with it. It's pretty chaotic, but it is good. So my process is very linear to like with all of the stuff that I do. I always start with pencils before going to pixels. So I wanted my card to have the 2023 because I want it to be more New Year's focused because I'm planning on using this card to send to my clients. And hopefully you can use the same concept for your business or your loved ones. So I started just by doodling uh, 2023, just like going around. And then <laughs> I went to Behance and with the 36 days of type challenge, there is so much on there that I just went into the rabbit hole <laughs> with a lot of fonts, which was amazing. And then I landed on those two twos. That was a tongue twist right there to say <laughs> that three and this zero, which looks a little bit more like a tractor wheel donut. If you are from Canada and um, <laughs> you go to Tim Martins, you know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so let's jump in into Illustrator right away to start tracing those numbers. So I have already brought my scans from here and I'm going to lock that image. And today, instead of tracing, like I'm gonna be tracing with the pen tool, but because I want my numbers to be big and it's going to be at the front of the postcard i want my curves to be like really really nice and soft so instead of 
doing this and then having an anchor point that I need to soften after. I will just use anchors and then go with the anchor point tool after to make sure that my Bezier curve works well. So if what I just said is does not make sense, it will in a minute. So let's trace this one. And it takes a bit of practice to know like where to put the anchors. That comes with experience. There you go. Okay. So now if we hover on the pen tool, we can go and select that anchor and look at this like magic. Let me zoom in. It's like magic. I love this. And I don't know if you're like me, but whenever I tune in on an Adobe Live, I love to watch people tracing. I think it's so soothing. Let me know if it is the same for you. And see how quick that was. And then we have a perfect number three. <laughs> I'm seeing some new people coming in. So hi, Rich. Hi, Peter. It's good to see you here. Now, obviously here, because we'll just go in round that. Just like so, just so it's high fidelity with the sketch. And that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. What does everyone think? Do you like that three? And I will just put it on the side. And why not do this one since it is right there? So I'm curious to know um, for everyone who is watching right now, do you send some promotional postcards or some greeting cards to your loved ones or maybe even your clients at this time around, this time of year? And if you do, design some cards? Do you sometimes uh, go to markets to sell them? I'd be curious to know that. So happy I discovered this, uh, this tool. It's going to save me a lot of time. Sometimes you still have to go over it and just like this here. But this is what I love about the pen tool is that you have a lot of control. Let's see what you're saying in the chat. So, <laughs> Linda, you made that look so easy. Thank you. <laughs> Well, I have been practicing for a very long time. Lila is saying, I send gifts to my best clients. This is the best way to do an impression and stay top of mind. And I'm curious to know, Lila, what does best client mean? Is this because they pay on time? <laughs> There you go. Okay, so this one is a little bit trickier, but that's okay because we can go with our direct uh, selection. 
and just round that curve and readjust. And I swear, right now, it doesn't look like a lot, but we have a packed session today. And hopefully you'll get a few aha uh as we get to design together. I'm trying to do this fast so we can get to the good stuff. And I'd love to explain it a little better, but without visuals, it's a little hard, so. There you go. That looks pretty good. Happy with that. Gonna put it to the side. I could, I'll refine it a little bit like after. So now let's go to the zero or the tr like donut tractor wheel. Does anyone get the joke of the tractor wheel? I'm curious. <laughs> Oh, Caroline is saying uh, to responding to Lila, who is sending gifts to uh, her clients, is saying the ones on the nice list. That that is true. So with this one, instead of tracing, I will just do a bunch of circles like around the lisp, and then use the pathfinder. So this one, that's why I'm like do this, and I always write some <laughs> um, some notes on my sketch on my sketchbook um just to make sure because sometimes i like to repeat stuff to see if i still like like it as i'm drawing it um but you can find some like notes like this is messy i love this um refine this um all over my sketchbook my sketchbook is super messy as you can see i'm not using the lines properly I'm just very artsy that way let me stretch this there you go all right using the align tool which is my best friend i'm going to group this duplicate hold down the shift key to make sure that it's a perfect 90 degrees I'm gonna select this again, use the align tool to make sure it is perfectly centered, group that too. And I'm going to duplicate that again, hold the shift key to 45 degrees. Again, align, center it. See what I'm trying to do here? Just going to center it better. Now I want to do it again. Duplicate. This is called efficient working. But now because we have already done, I'm just going to go with the eye because we have already gone through like 45 and 80. So this looks somewhat okay. We will see whenever we use the pathfinder. Might be a little weird. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Oh, Ariane is saying, I get the tractor wheel joke. Well, you are Canadian, so that makes sense. <laughs> Let me know where everyone is tuning in from today. Okay, center this. And you know what? I actually want to make my circle a little bigger. And I can see here there's already some inconsistencies. Okay, so let's just, oops, not that one. And if it's not perfect, it's totally okay. There you go. I just did a pathfinder. 
and if Adam is in the house, um, can reuse his verb, pet findering it. <laughs> That's like an inside joke that we had during his live. You should definitely go and check it out. Use the pathfinder that like, has an empty middle. And there you go. We have our shape. Let's put them all in black to see what they look like. Oops. There you go. I think I'll have to refine this one a little bit. But it's looking, it's starting to look good. And again, I didn't get there just by accident. I did the research before. So if you just tuned in, this is no happy accident. Sometimes it works that way, but not always. Not in this case. We only have an hour together today. So, all right. Now I want to do this one, and I'm going to do the same using some anchors and refining with the anchor point tool after. So you want to put an anchor like in the curves and then where it kind of like links to make sure that your uh, shape closes. And let's, it's like magic just does it for you. It's amazing. There you go. Oh, wow. We have a, like some people from all over the world today. I love to see that. Let's see. We have some, uh, the Haney. I'm sorry if I didn't say your name properly, but from Finland, we have Caroline from the UK. We have Paul from Winnipeg, en français. Bonjour, Paul. Uh, we have, oh, Kaz from the UK, and it's cold and frosty. Well, I mean, this hopefully will warm you up because we're about to do some really fun, fun stuff. Uh, we have Peter from Massachusetts. We have Caroline from NYC. Oliver from, um, uh, the UK, a lot of people from the UK. This is amazing. We have Susan from Maine. We have Monica from Mexico. Wow. I'm loving this worldwide party right now. This is great. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, I didn't mention at the beginning that this was my first time doing it solo. So definitely feeling the love right now. It means a lot. Thank you, everyone. All right. Let's see how this is looking. Just going to use my ruler to make sure that the anchors are perfectly flat and aligned. And it looks like so. Let's just move this a little bit. It's funny how like it can look really good just when it's outlined, but whenever it is filled with color, that um, it changes the shape and then you have to go and work at it a little bit. So it's always good to have both perspective. And you know what, as I'm looking at this too, I think I prefer this one and I'd love to see, cause I feel that with the, the three that has an angular line here, that other two, like that would work better. So since it's super fast to do it, let's do it again. Let's do this one. Looks pretty good. What do you think? Was this a good uh, decision? And whoop. I should do like Claddy. I watched a lot of Claddy's videos to get ready for this one. And I've noticed that she does a lot of uh, um, sound effect whenever she's designing, like, whoosh, or like, whoop, 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 whoop. 
<laughs> Claddy, is this part of your brand to do some sound effects? <laughs> I thought that was super cute. This one is not straight. Yeah, this looks a lot better. Perfect. All right. So, yeah, I can already see it has a better flow with the rest of the numbers. I'm just going to delete that guide. And let's refine this two here. Because it looks a little weird. I think it needs to be a little thicker here. So we can use the direct selection tool just to play. We'll play with that curve. There you go. Do you know what's worse? As I'm doing this now, I'm realizing that I actually talk to myself whenever I'm designing. <laughs> so this does not feel that much different. It's just that I'm being recorded right now. So this here bothers me a little bit if I'm being super picky. And do you do this too? Like you'll get super close to the screen and then like go back to just have a different perspective. I used to do that in painting school whenever, way back when, when I was in the university and paint class. And I still do it today with my designs. And I squint, I squint. I want to see it blurry to see if it works. Then I want it, I want to see it like clear. Then they move <laughs> all the time. So I treat all my designs as if they were a painting. Okay. So right now, pretty happy with how this looks. I'm just going to remove the stroke that is around. And this looks a little bit bigger than the rest. All right, how do we feel? Do we like this? I'm pretty happy with that. Obviously, I'm going to save, which I haven't done so right now. And this is going to become my working folder. I always love to keep a copy of my working folder because then if I need to go back, well, I have access to everything. This is very clean for my working file. Um, usually it's all over the place, bleeding all around the artboard. It's uh, pretty ugly. And uh, whenever it is super ugly and just not ugly, but it's just very messy, I love to go to view and then trim view. So then I can see my designs like on like the artboard. Um, so again, it's like going back, going, <laughs> it's like the squinting method for the painter. It's nice to have like a clean look at it too. Okay. Uh, thank you, Caroline, saying that it's super cool. All right. So then we have our concept. So. I have already prepared uh, a, a file for the front of the postcard. So we, it, this is a five by seven uh, inches and I added a bleed of 0.125 inch. Uh, this is like the regular bleed that you should be adding. And just make sure that whenever you do do your file to have it in CMYK because you probably want this to go to print, unless this is a digital. If it's just a digital postcard, then you can definitely doing in uh, RGB. So I want to bring this here. And oops, let's have fun with the positioning of this. For color, um, I'm kind of feeling black and white these days a lot. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm usually a pretty colorful person, but um, I think I got inspired by this type magazine. Uh, if we want to zoom in, uh, this is a really good magazine for type here. Um, and I really like the cover where they use some silver on the top 
and the black and white. And I think that this is what inspired me for this design too. Um, yeah, so let's see, let's see what it does. We have this here. Make sure to bring it at the front. I'm going to zoom in for all of you. I'm going to, oh, it's already locked. My black shape at the back is locked. So this is good. I can work freely on it. So here is where we can have some fun, right? And obviously, whenever you're sending a postcard or a greeting card to anyone, you want them to have this wow effect um, whenever they receive it. So you want to create a big impact. Um, and again, going back to the magazine that I just showed you, that cover, it is kind of chaotic. And since I was being inspired from the who's a type that I showed you, um, I kind of want to make it a bit chaotic too. So let's see what we can do here. And the tricky part with this is to still make it read it because we read from left to right. So whenever it's too chaotic and you, you still want people to read like a word or a sentence, stuff like that, um, it's that's like the sweet spot that you have to find that they can still understand what is like on the postcard or poster or cover or whatsoever you're designing. Oh, well, my time is going by so quickly. This is crazy. And we have so much to do. Oh, Ariane is saying the black and white is probably the Wednesday Adams vibe. Definitely. Um, I've watched this series in two days and I loved it. I'm not a crazy fan of Tim Burton. I know I dared to say that. Um, I, I don't like Halloween that much, but I love the artist, like the artistry behind everything he does. So I love to watch popular phenomenon pop culture like that to stay up to date with trends and what people are talking about all right so we have a question from dope gasm here as a marketing consultant how do i inquire working with designers on project even though i offer strategy and research for my clients already this is a great question. Um, I mean, I think that whenever you do approach your designers that it has to be very clear that uh, you already have the strategy and, and that their roles are defined, that they will be designing under your direction. Um, if you do have a working contract, that's like the best um, way to protect yourself to just say, hey, like, this is what we are, like, this is what we want from you. Um, this is like the best advice that I can give you for the moment. It is a tough one. Okay, I think I want to do this another color. Let's do it like a gray as if it was silver. So I don't know for all of you, but to me, New Year's is all about champagne. <laughs> I love bubbles. I love bubbles on anything. It could be like soda water or anything. I just love bubbles in general. But to me, New Year's is equivalent to champagne and some shimmer. So I love when like going to parties and people are wearing like sequin or like a crazy uh, like shimmery makeup. I love that. And actually for the occasion today, I did wear my little cocktail dress that I usually wear for New Year's to be on theme. And also it was black. Um, so this here, I think could be a good idea to have it silver, just again, like the magazine that I just showed you, cause it does create that nice chic look specifically if it vibes well with the brand of your business, why not do that? So right now we just have it as a gray because unfortunately we can't create 
uh, silver on the screen, but your printer can. So great way to offer that for your clients. Okay. I'm liking where this is going right now. So I feel like I'm missing a bit of detail here and I would love to maybe not put so much attention on the 20 and just have some attention on the 23 because we are going in, in like 2023. So let's try maybe a stroke around it. Like that, like just a bit thicker. And this we will fill it. I don't want to see the other stroke underneath. There you go. My color swatches are being a little picky today. Just turn this around because I realized that I didn't do this properly. So here it's not the same, but that's okay because we can hide it right behind the three. So that works. Perfect. And I wanted the three to be at the front. And again, this would be a great time to use the trim view to make sure because this is bleeding and also there is bleed on it. So if you go to view, then we do trim view. We could see how it would look like if it was printed and we can still work from it in the trim view to make sure that it's exactly what we want. I feel like this too should be a bit bigger. This one should be a little smaller. And kerning is hard to understand and get. It just takes practice. Even though there's no kerning here, um, you still want to make sure that your letters are all proportioned, but we can cheat a little bit. It's whatever the eye is saying at this point. All right, so I'm pretty happy with this design here. What do we think in the chat? Would you be impressed if you got that in the mail? <laughs> all right, so now that this is all done, let's hop into InDesign. So InDesign is great, obviously, for anything printed. And I mean, I love InDesign. I love Illustrator and InDesign. They just work so well together and you can easily go back and forth between both of them. Um, so let's import our design that we just did, which would be this one here, right there. And it's already the right proportion. So I have this, I have already set up to be five by seven already has the bleed and everything is good to go. And you will notice that if I go into my page tab here, I have four. So remember at the beginning when we said that we were going to design not one, but two postcards. So this is where it gets interesting. So the first postcard that you will be designing will be the gift and you won't be sending it just like that. You will be sending it uh, in either an envelope or a cello bag, which I will show you a little later. And then when you have your insert, you will be writing on the insert. So that way when people open it, they see the message directly, but then they have a remaining nice unused postcard. So this is a way to send a gift to your, your clients or your loved ones. But at the same time, because on the second page here, we will add our social media, our website, our logo. So it is a great way for your clients to do some outreach and promote your business without even them knowing. <laughs> I've been doing this for the past three years and <laughs> I was very open and transparent about that with my clients um, and they loved the concept. And if anything, it got me some work because they wanted to do the same for their own business. So now let's design the back. 
I will show you a font that I really like that I thought that could work really well with the letters that we just designed. And it was a source code, which is an Adobe font. And I have already activated it on my machine. So let's go back to this. And most of the postcard, like it's divided in two, like there's a line here and then there's like lines to write the address and stuff like that. I want to be a bit more modern about it. And I want to keep like this full space to be able to write a long message if needed. I don't want to feel constrained. So let's start here. And in the essence of time, I have already prepared the copy. And I love to jump back, back and forth within a, a um, Word document, just because it tells me if I have a mistake sometimes. And unfortunately, grammar isn't my best forte. So it does help a lot. All right, so we have source code here. It is a little big. Let's put it a bit smaller. Eight point. Eight point is very small for print, but it still works. They will still be able to read it. And you also don't want it to be like self-promotion for me. All right, this looks good. Let's do another one here. Scan to discover. So another great way for your clients or your loved one to interact with what like your project or your website is to add a QR code. And you can be very smart about what you link to that QR code. So in this case, I have already prepared a web page specifically for this campaign, which allow me to show this to you. 23 prompts for a good year. So <laughs> 23, obviously, because we're going into 2023 and it looks a little crazy right now because it is <laughs> full screen, the website, but it is a list of just 20, three fun things there. There's a, a bonus one to make 24. So then the, the my people, my my surrounding <laughs> can, can make two prompts like a month. Um, but it's a great way to invite them to have fun and not just be thinking about business. Sometimes it can be daunting to just always, always, always speak business. But if you invite your clients or loved ones to be like, hey, let's, you know, maybe whenever you're not doing some business, try a new restaurant or visit a museum or go to a market and stuff to get them inspired. Um, it could be a great way again to just stand out and stay top of mind. So here we have a list of 23 things and the 44th thing will definitely get them out of their comfort zone unless they're, <laughs> they love to sing, but it's go karaoke. Singing in the car in the shower also works. <laughs> Thank you, Jacqueline is saying, love this. Linda is saying, love this. Caroline, I love it too, uh, with numbers. Also looks like a ribbon. Oh yes, you're absolutely right. And thank you, Cass, for saying, uh, love it. Thank you so much for the love. But yes, this can be pretty much anything for the QR code that you will be adding on your, on your postcard. It could be your website. It could be a new project you're working on. Um, it could be even <laughs> if you're sending this to loved ones, it could be like a bunch of photos of the year. Just go crazy. There is so much that you can do. Okay, and for uh, the, the QR code, you can actually generate a QR code directly in InDesign. So you, we can do generate QR code here. Make sure that it is a web hyperlink. We will go and copy the link quickly. I should have done that before. Add the URL. Okay. And then you, ha you have your QR code. Let's just make it a tad smaller and bring it here in the corner. This is still really big for me. Perfect. 
And then we have a call to action here, scan to discover. And if we go back to our copy, 23 prompts for a good year. You want to have that repetition. So then whenever they land on that page using that QR code, they will know exactly what it is. So this, and I want to make it like that. Again, to have some room to write here. So whenever I press on W, I can see what my design looks like without the guide. And I'm pretty happy about this actually here. I was going to put my logo here, but I think it's okay. It's okay for now. And here I do want to repeat that 2023. So there is that uh, visual element that is repeated. So I'm just going to go back in Illustrator, copy this directly into InDesign. I love that we can do that. Oops, I did not press shift to maintain its proportion. Here you go. Actually, I want to make sure it's properly aligned with the QR code. Now let's look. Hmm, that does feel a little busy at the bottom. So let's see if we can maybe bring it up instead like this. This does not read well. Let's do it the other side. Can we do it like that? I like this. This is different. Perfect. I'm really happy with this and we will save that. Here's I'm gonna zoom in a little bit for you all right so now it's time to design the insert card and i just noticed the time oh my we have like 15 minutes left okay so what i like about this for the insert is that we can just for the second page copy exactly this one because we want to have the same design and you will understand just in a few minutes and here will be the CTA, the call to action. So if we have like the 2023 and I have already have my copy here, I want to use the same font properties. And by the way, the template that we are building right now is also a gift uh, for like in the downloadable files. So feel free to use it, add in your own design and impress your clients. Actually, let's do that a little bit bigger to make sure that they don't miss it. And this is the insert, so it's totally okay if it's not like the most designed, because this is probably going to be thrown away. I don't like when my text is hyphenated. So I just uncheck that and then we can bring that QR code right here. We can make it a little bigger. And there you go. So I'm pretty happy with this. If we look at the whole um, design, we have our 2023 here. I think we could add like happy new year right here, just so it's like, like very cheery and they understand right away what it is. Um, and then we have the back, which is repeated, the insert and the back again. Okay, so. This again might be a little bit like, why are we designing two? Can we design just one? So let me go back to my presentation here. 
So I cheated. I did this a little, this, <laughs> a little bit before, obviously, to be ready for this live. But so this will be the gift, as mentioned, and then this is the insert. So whenever you are packaging uh, the postcard, you will be using two. So this one here, which this is the other side, and this one. Using cello bags. So if we want to look here, I have printed out the cards already, as you can see here. And the back is the same. So whenever you package them, you would put them together, use the cello bag like this, and insert it so it looks like it is one. You can write a little message here. We have Happy Holidays Adobe Live using the hashtag. And, and it's, it's rigid, so it won't, also won't get bent because there's two. Uh, I printed this on an 18 point paper, which is really thick uh, for both cards, which is great. And then, yeah, you can go crazy. So like go extra and decorate that cello fan, a uh, cello bag, sorry, with some stickers. You can do some painting. You can use a Sharpie to just go like crazy and have like a crazy design. Um, I've seen before too that you can also write your message directly on the cello bag instead of the card. And let me just show you what it does. So whenever you do remove it, it is quite tight. But whenever you do remove it, see? The, the clients will go like, oh. And then they have the, the CTA here saying, send this postcard, this postcard to someone else which is awesome. You will definitely make an impression doing that. Okay, going back to the presentation. You want to make sure that you also have like a good place, as we mentioned before, where you're sending them with that QR code. And again, that could be anything that you can think of that you'll know that you will you want to share and maybe this is something that maybe even a new service if you want to showcase your new services um, it can be pretty much anything to add on there whatever you want to advertise to start the new year with it is a good idea to add on that a QR code just go crazy let your imagination take you everywhere so while we're on the subject of uh, sending postcards and greeting cards. I would love to invite all of you to do a good action for this time around. Um, and if you have any leftover greeting cards, um, here's an idea to brighten some one day. So this is something that I do with some of my friends and my fiance. We will write about 50 cards to um, a assisted living home because sometimes they get super lonely during the holiday and we just write to a special friend with like a nice warm uh, holiday wishes and we sign like we sign our names <laughs> with, uh, you know, and uh, I usually do this for uh, an assistant living home that my great aunt is staying at. And whenever I do visit, uh, some people like tell me that this was the only Christmas card that they received during that year, which broke my heart. So since then, I keep doing it and I try to like send it to even more organizations. Like, So I'm inviting you to do all this and you can definitely screenshot this message as a way to inspire you. This was uns <laughs> unscripted, but just added it there just to if you want to do a good action. So I'm a little bit early, so let's go back to the design and see if we can refine. And we add the a Happy New Year just right here. And we have Stacy saying, ah, oh, that's a beautiful idea. And if you do do it, please like hashtag uh, Adobe Live Holiday Week uh, 2022 to see um, so we can share the love. Kaz saying, love that idea. You're very, um, yeah, obviously I, I want, I want to share this. <laughs> um, and again, it could be to an, anyone, any, any organizations that you like, it could be a hospital to think like the, the, the 
essential workers. It could be to a police station, like anything, like anyone who is working on the holidays, sometimes like it's, it's hard. So just knowing that someone that they don't know care about them is like a great way to just show some love and you'll feel good about yourself too. Okay. So let's go add happy new year right here. It would be good if it was white so we can see it. I'm going to put it in all caps and in bold. Here you go. And I want it to take a bit more room. So this is really rare that I use this. Oh, oh. Oh, no. My InDesign just crashed. I have too much going around. Like, on my machine <laughs> that's okay we were at the very end of this stream so as this starts back up i will go back into the chat khaled is saying super cool thank uh thank you so much um Caroline saying easy so prepared <laughs> thank you i really tried francisco saying so cool thank you so much becca stepped away for a bit looking great easy thank you so much Alex, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon to you, to you too. Leela <laughs> saying uh, that emoji with the QR code. Yes, like always think of a way to like have a step up. Um, you know, our world, the designer world is very uh, competitive. There is a lot of great designers. So on the business side, sometimes it's hard to stand out. But by doing stuff like that, it is a good way to stand out and it will also show your clients or even your loved ones how you think creatively and this is a superpower creativity is a superpower so let me do that again bold i'm happy that didn't lose barely didn't lose anything just that happy new year thing and I want to do this. There you go. Now I really like this. Let's make it a bit bigger. I like that little touch. Perfect. So do we have any questions in the chat and maybe some stuff that you'd like to talk about during all this and maybe we can design a social media post at the same time so for a social media post i always like to do 1080 pixel because it is also a great idea to showcase that design on your social media and you can also announce uh, it to your clients saying hey like <laughs> look in the mail you will be receiving a postcard that looks like this so then they will be on the lookout and they love that anticipation so we can take that bring it here oh and that's right that background was locked so let's bring it over here and we have Robert saying, this is looking great, Izzy. Well, thank you so much. And like I said earlier, I'm not that good at type. Um, this type exploration was super fun to do. Uh, the project with uh, Adam, Ariane, Chelsea, and Todd. And I want to continue to explore it. Because when you're not good at something, that's what you need to practice. So let's do this. And we can, yeah, just a little thicker. So it looks like the postcard that we have. Maybe we can take a bit more room. Oh, hi, Nicole. Nicole just tuned in. Thank you so much for joining. 
And we'll just make it a little tighter. And I want to make sure that two is at the front. Like that. This is always finicky whenever you're restructuring from a rectangle to a square. Okay. All right. Well, you could just export this and then post it on your social media. It has been a real pleasure to design with all of you. Follow me on my Behance. Um, and if you actually want to send me your address, I can send you a postcard back. Um, and let's see your designs with the giveaways that we have been giving you. And happy holidays to everyone.